Okay, guys, I'm going to go into a little bit about what's happened with me to sort of give you a little history of, of what's happened happening here and what our discussion is going to be about. As I was saying before Ron joined us, now more than ever, it's important to build a strong link profile from related sites. Uh, it's no longer just a good thing to have your, your link on a bunch of sites, you know, like a, a car wash site or, or whatever. That just doesn't work anymore, especially if it's exact match anchor. It will actually drag your site down. Um, and as a result of exact match anchor no longer being a silver bullet, a lot of SEO companies who are not that knowledgeable are going to start engaging in mass negative SEO attacks on your website so they can knock you out of your slot and their clients will then rise up. Um, and then they can claim, you know, they can spend a couple bucks and have, you know, your link lasted to thousands of websites in a matter of days, which creates this gigantic link spike on your link graph. And then Google says, oh, that's over optimization. That's negative SEO. We have to punish that guy's website. And that's negative SEO in a nutshell. So SEO companies and your competitors are probably going to start doing this. It, it's, it's a logical conclusion. Um, and I'm a, I am a, an example of somebody that it's happened to. Every day when I check hrefs, I probably have three or four new backlinks from directories or a forum that are just clearly spam that have exact match anchor instead of my name, which is what I always use. I always use like a variation of my name when I post in someone's website or blog post. I don't use exact match anchor. <laughs> uh, so you'll see that uh, happening to a lot of you guys or your friends or you're going to hear about it like you're hearing from me. So now it's more important than ever to make sure that you have highly relevant backlinks uh, from relevant sites that aren't exact match, that they're actually branded or naked. So when you do get a spam attack, which more than likely is going to be from exact match anchors, because the more fake, bogus exact match anchors you have on crummy sites, the further Google will take targeted action to push you down for the keyword because they'll think that you're trying to over-optimize for that keyword. So if you're trying to rank for Maryland personal injury attorney, well, your competitor knows that too. And so they're going to blast a bunch of exact match anchors uh, all over the Internet on crummy sites like porn sites or directories from India to try to hurt your ranking for that term. So you can try to dilute that term by having a lot of branded and nakeds, which I'm sure everybody knows what a branded anchor and a naked anchor is, but you need to have them on relevant websites and that's why the circle of trust is important because we have a group of guys who can help share good material on their sites to help dilute the exact match anchor from your site. So a lot of you are probably going, oh geez, what am I going to do? Uh, you know, I don't want to get a spam attack or get hit with negative SEO. Well, what can I do? Well, I, I'm going to go over some different techniques that might be able to help you out a little bit. Um, and it's basically based on an article that Jim Loxley wrote for us. And I posted it in the upper left. Um, so anyways, does everybody know what the, the Domain Copyright Act is? No. 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 Okay. I've never heard that before. Okay, well the DMCA is a tool that you can use when a scraper site, for example, scrapes data from your site, like your name and your number, for example, and mass submits it all over the internet. So if they scrape exact match content off of a page on your site, or even a whole article, which is more <coughs> likely going to be the case, and they leave your links embedded in it that are exact match, uh, if they put that on a PR0 website, for example, that Google doesn't like, Google will drag you down for that article because now you have exact match anchors pointed to your site on a shitty website. And that'll actually pull your site down. And now directories, of course, from India are the worst because most of them have already been spotted by Google as content and domain farms. So as soon as you put a link on one of those directories, it sends a signal to Google that you surely must be a spammer. If somebody's got a lot of background noise, they should probably go to mute. I don't know who it is, but everybody can hear it. So, anyways, um, 
here's the deal. Um, if that happens, you know, what are you going to do? If someone's scraping your data or taking articles off your website, how are you going to find out about it? How do you even know? Well, the first thing that you can do is you can run your website through Copyscape. There's a website called Copyscape.com, which a lot of you guys probably already know about. Um, or you can just look at your backlink profile with Hrefs or Majestic and look at the new links that are coming in and look at the anchor text and then click on that and look at the website that it's on. Do a page rank check, look at the articles on the site. You'll see that a lot of them are just scraped from e articles or articles based or directly from someone's website. As soon as you see that, you can file what's called a Domain Copyright Act takedown notice. You can send it to the actual webmaster and then Andre is saying you can do an exact match search for the first paragraph, that's true, you guys. You can actually take the take an article on your site, put, or just a couple of quotes out of it, put uh, quotes around it. <laughs> Dan said he does it 25 times a day. That's funny. Constantly. Yeah, and you can actually find where people have stolen content off your site. Well, mm -hmm. you know that's a real problem now with Penguin and with Panda, which we'll go into a little bit more detail in a minute. See, because Google expects you guys, as reasonably trained webmasters, to do that 25 times a day. Remember, ignorance of the law is no excuse. You know what the Google guidelines are, so you better damn well enforce your rights under the guidelines. And that's how they think, because all things being equal, they're going to reward the guy, you know, the early bird gets the worm. So do it. The DMCA takedown is really going to help you guys a lot, because you can actually... Uh, Try to get it removed first, okay, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But try and get it removed first by contacting the webmaster. The problem is going to be, of course, most of these sites are privately registered. They have layers and layers of privacy security, so you can't find out who they are. There's no contact us. There's no privacy policy. There's no terms of service. The email address is usually bullshit, or it's you know never worked to begin with. And that's what you guys are left with. Okay, so I hope everybody understands so far. Because this is one of the things that Google looks for when they look at a spam site. You know, that, you know, so if you guys have links on a site that doesn't have a contact us, that doesn't have a privacy policy, that doesn't have a terms of service, the manual reviewer already has like 20 red flags being raised in his mind that this is a spam site. So now you've got this site that's been flagged probably by manual review already with your link on it that is destroying you. So what you try and do is try to find a way to contact that person to get it off their site. Why is it better to get it off the site than just have Google ignore it? Because when you do an href search for exact match anchors, just because Google no indexes that site, which will be the result of you making the complaint, still shows up in your backlinks report. So it could confuse you into thinking you have more exact match anchors than you really have, which is going to screw up your stats. So the first thing you want to do is try and get it removed. But if you can't, if you can't get a hold of the webmaster, if you can't get a hold of anybody to get it removed, if you can't get a hold of the website owner, your next step is to do a DMCA takedown email to Google. Now the article that Jim Loxley did has links on the forms that you can fill out directly from Google. It takes about five minutes. You just copy and paste the title of your article a snippet of your article, a link to where the offending material is located, and a, and a link to where your material is located. I've already been able to take down about 20 pages in the last three days. Which is hey, Mike. An accomplishment. Go ahead. How duplicate does the content have to be? I've got some people that are copying my content, and they've made a modest effort to make some changes. But, you know, it's the, the modest effort was not so, uh, was not so Herculean. Well, if it gets picked up uh, on Copyscape, it's bright red or whatever, you'll know that it's that they took a snippet and plagiarized it, and that's enough. Okay. And uh, interesting, because I'm going to go into how I've been able to do this on directories, which... Because right, right now, while I'm listening to you, Mike, I'm emailing this. I, I'm writing this guy a, a letter in his contact form on his website. Awesome. And the title of your letter... Basically, is just, I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it. And, and basically just saying, come on. It's basically saying, come on, you know, I mean, can you... Uh, don't do this. Well, the title of your letter should be DMCA takedown notice. I, I will. I'll steal it off the email you sent me. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's the title. You can okay. take your call, but put it on mute, man. 
so we can keep talking over here. Hey guys, so so here's the thing. Um, what I'm getting at, the reason why you want it taken down first, I want you all to understand. The reason why you want to try to get it taken down first, and why it's a little more time consuming, is because you don't want to have, just because getting it taken down by Google doesn't mean it's not going to display in a link search. So that means when you do a backlinks report on your site, it's still going to show up as a link. And so now you have to cross-reference your list of taken down domains with your actual list on hrefs. There's no way you can get an accurate pie graph chart of your exact match versus your no follows versus your do follows. You'll never be able to understand what your actual link weight and ratio is easily if you don't get the content completely removed. So try that first because the second step is to do a DMCA takedown notice to Google and if you can prove to them that it was your copy then they're going to go ahead and they're going to de-index that page from Google search results. It still will show up on Bing and Yahoo. You have to do a separate notice to them. So it's still a lot of work. It's not just Google but of course you and I all know all we care about is Google pretty much. So you know that's the most important one. But try to get it completely taken down and if you can't then your next step is the DMCA takedown directly to Google. It takes five minutes to fill this form out. It's so stupid. And then you can go ahead and you can knock these guys uh, out of the game of doing negative SEO on your site for that particular page. Now, many people uh, like myself were misled into believing that sites like eZine and Articles Base uh, you know, would be a good thing and they're what Google wanted in order for us to get more backlinks. But I've had discussions with guys like AJ Cohn from Blind Five Year Old. He's got like 25,000 followers on Google. He's spoken with us before. He's, he's an expert and he knows a lot of people at Google. You know, he goes to all the seminars. He's pretty well versed. You know, and he sort of said, well, I don't recall seeing any material in particular where Google encouraged that, and I never advised my clients to do that. So bells start going off in my head, right? So then I start doing searches for articles from easy and article space that have been reshared. And every single site, you know, a porn site, a massage site, a car dealership, um, you know, a dry cleaning business where they've just scraped articles from easy and article space to populate their sites. In, in 2007, that actually would get you ranked because it counted as a backlink. But now, every single one of those sites I've looked at is all PR0. When I go to check their backlinks on Google, there's nothing showing up. When I check to see what pages uh, under site show up on Google, nothing's showing up. So automatically that tells me this is a site that's been penalized already or sandboxed by Google or has no value. So now I've got all these links all over all these crappy sites. Well, thank God these morons embedded their own links into my copy, embedded pictures of their business and what they're selling into my copy. Because guess what, guys? They just substantially altered and, and, and violated the fair use doctrine and now you have a basis to get that stuff removed. Otherwise, your license with easing would prevent you from getting that stuff removed. So thank God these spammers are giving us an opening <laughs> right now to get that copy taken down. And of course, the next thing I did, or actually simultaneously that I did, is I deleted my articles base and easing accounts to make sure this copy doesn't get reshared again by someone else. Um, there's another, you know, other people have other views about this. I'm looking at the big picture. Sure, easy may turn itself around and, you know, they may be great to Google, but as long as one moron reshares your article on a shitty website and you have page one rankings, number one, that might drop you to the number three or page three or page two. So don't mess around with duplicate copy floating around with exact match anchors from crummy sites being pointed at you. Don't let it happen. Avoid it. Now, Let's go into directories because we just talked about articles. Articles are a lot easier to get taken down and you know because clearly if they've altered it or they've embedded their own commercial links or material into your article, you have a basis to get it taken down. Um, directories are a little harder because normally it's just a link to your site with your name. But in my case, 
these people scraped actual content off my site, like Michael Eline is a former Marine, father of, you know, three or whatever, father of two, <coughs> blah, 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 with my phone number and contact info, which is actually a snippet from one of my articles on my website. So I was able to successfully get blog comments and directory comments taken down by simply proving to them that this is content that was already on my website that has been scraped into a directory. So don't think that you can't use a DMCA notice for directory or blog comments because there is a way. If you can show that that, that text is on your website buried in an article somewhere, um, then you've got a pretty good opportunity. Yes, Andre, on my own site if you're talking to me. Um, but no, but, I'm talking yeah. to Dan. Sorry, Mark. Okay, fair enough. And, and look, these guys commenting already know this stuff on the left, but some of you other guys don't have any idea. Okay, so basically what I'm left with now is a bunch of really bad forum links which don't really have any scraped copy from my website. So the forums are the most deadly and damaging uh, to guys like us because Google highly discounts forums and this brings us, this segues us into our next topic. These forums index everything. They index all the tags, they index the categories, and they index the archives. So when you do a backlinks check from forum comments, you might find you have 60 backlinks from 60 pages that are all the exact same page because the forum is actually not fixing their site to where only one page is indexing. They're just letting everything get indexed because that's the default position of WordPress and Blogger and probably movable type to index everything under the sun. And so now we're at the, <clears throat> at the next discussion which has to do with duplicate content and how it affects you. Well, there's on-site duplicate content and then there's off-site duplicate content that, that we all just discussed, which is very painful and harmful to you. It can hurt you under Penguin. Penguin is targeted action. So if you have a bunch of exact match anchor pointing to one page and Google thinks you're over-optimizing, they'll only punish that one page for that exact match anchor. Panda, however, is a site-wide penalty for on-site problems. Panda can take your whole site down a couple of positions or more just for one or two pages that have the same or substantially similar content on them. Now, I'm not talking about your style sheets, guys. I know your style sheets are going to have contact us. They're going to have, you know, all that stuff on them. You know, they're going to have duplicate content all over your site because that's your style sheet. That's different. Google takes that into consideration. What I'm talking about is pages on your site of content you have snippets from one page that goes on to another page, that could be enough to penalize you under Panda. So the idea is, is we don't want to mess with Panda. We want to exercise caution. And so the article that Andre did, which is also posted on the left in the top up there, has to do with on-site duplicate content issues. You know, we had kind of an argument or a discussion last week about this. I think we all can agree that we should be no indexing uh, tags and archives. I think that's a no-brainer. Now, we all just heard that all blogs pretty much default to index every page, archives, tags. So if you have 50 tags uh, under a comment, that means you'll have 50 pages that are identical on your site, all with a different file extension. Not everybody here knows what a file extension is, but they've seen them. Your home page might be uh, ronmiller.com, but then Ron Miller might have an about us about his partner, so it might say ronmiller.com Elise Langlois. That would be the file extension for his attorney who works for him, Elise Langlois. That's called a file extension. Each tag would have its own file extension. It might be ronmiller.com car accident, ronmiller.com truck accident, ronmiller.com divorce attorney, whatever it might be. That would become a file extension and a brand new page with the exact content on it because your tags by default are automatically set to index. So Google is going to say, okay, well, we see there's a bunch of pages that are the same. We're just going to index one. But you know what? This webmaster should be smart enough 
to know they should only be indexing and or setting one page to index with the same content. So now you risk a panda penalty. You risk panda saying, oh my god, there's 60 pages of the same content. This guy's trying to game Google. This guy's trying to over-optimize. Let's hit this guy, and we're not going to tell him why. We're just going to punish him and let him figure it out on his own because, you know what, he can always do pay-per-click. You know, if he doesn't get it right, it's his problem. So that's, that's kind of what you guys are left with. So by God, you know, use this article that Loxley did. Go in and no index your category, not your cat. go index your archives and your tags. Now let's go into categories. Some people think it's a great idea to go ahead and set categories to index because categories, categories creates its own page with snippets of each of the pages. So a typical categories page would have a snippet of maybe 10 articles that are already on your posts page. But each each one of those little titles has a snippet of what's already on a page that's on your site. Well, that's a potential panda penalty. I don't think it's a wise idea to index that page until we've heard more from Matt Cutts or somebody where we have an actual one way or another answer, is it okay to do? I say it's probably not. I recommend that anybody in the circle of trust not do it. There's really no reason to do it. Uh, you're going you're gonna to rank well for the one page that's indexed because all of us guys are going to vote for it. I like it so much we might cite to it in one of our own articles. For example, I just did a recent press release uh, where I cited to an article that Matt Dolman did as one of my sources for that press release. So, and Ron Miller already does this by default as a very well-trained attorney. He knows that we should be citing to sources, which I call authority search. And I think that we should brand the term authority search because it's important. Anytime you write an article, you should link out to the authority. And so that's kind of what Ron already does. The point being is you're going to have one page that should be indexed. All of us guys can help make that page rank without having to resort to tricks to try to have two examples of the same page ranking. We can all vote, like, Facebook, tweet, and we can blow it up. Um, and so that's pretty much everything that I had to discuss. I know that um, Slepko wanted to talk a little bit about tweeting and how important that is. Um, and so I kind of wanted to just turn this over to Slepko for a couple of minutes so we could talk about maybe helping each other in tweeting and Facebook because we're all sort of G plus stagnant, as his article says. And uh, if you want to really improve your social profile, you should probably be doing more than just Google Plus. So go ahead, uh, Dave, talk to these guys a little bit about why Twitter and Facebook and not just Google Plus is so important. Well, I, I actually think that Twitter is more important than Google+, Plus, um, and so is Facebook. But I think everyone that is involved in the circle is giving overemphasis on Google+. Plus. Although I do concede the fact that Google+, Plus is important and probably even more important going forward because as time goes by, it seems that Google+, Plus is going to give increased importance to their own um, thing in order when determining the value of you know all these social signals. But what I'm thinking is happening is because we're all on Google Plus and we're all seeing each other, you know, sharing, resharing, and plus wanting each other's content, it's just become like the simple and easy solution. Whereas Twitter, a little more complicated because you have to sign on; you can't see what everyone else is doing. But I think everyone here is just going crazy with Google Plus and just basically ignoring the Facebook, which takes obviously more work. Sometimes you have to sign in and so forth. So I think that people should be giving, uh, you know, equal credence to Twitter and Facebook as they do Google Plus. And I think there are a lot of guys that are on here that are retweeting each other's content. But I do find it a little bit annoying when I spend the time of reading people's posts and I retweet their posts and so forth and then I get back some sort of form saying thank you for the retweet but then you don't spend people don't spend five minutes looking at what I wrote and maybe giving me you know, some uh, reshares or uh, retweeting my content so I'm thinking okay if this if I'm spending my time to go read their content and 
retweet it and they're not spending any time on mine, I'm moving on to the next guy who's going to, you know, reciprocate that. And I just, you know, I think, but I want to say that a lot of the guys that are right here in this are actually doing it, you know, are retweeting, but there are plenty of guys that I spend all the time and all I get back is a thank you. And that doesn't really, you know, do any good doesn't for me. I'm moving all. to the next person. Michael, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Um, when it comes to Twitter and that, I mean, do you guys have time to do that? I find it very time consuming. I'm sure everybody will agree, but it's like a lot of noise. A lot of noise there, and that's that's the problem with Twitter. And and I mean, to sit down and and make the time, you know, Dan put their uh, Hootsuite, which I agree with. Another option is is Vocus. I don't know. It's very expensive though. But if if we get in as a group. We can get a, a a pretty good pricing on that, which actually highlights. I don't know if you if you've heard of Vocus. They actually own Harrow, Helper, Reporter Out, and um, one of the uh, press release sites. But what it actually does is it identifies various topics and options for retweeting and where to tweet and what to tweet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, more so on an automated basis than it would it would take you to sit down and and do it yourself. Yeah. Um, if I can address that, the retweeting doesn't take that much time. I mean, you could literally do it in 15 minutes a day. Basically, what I do is I go to you know Anthony Castelli's site every day. I look at some of the good content that he posts, and I give him some retweets. And he always you know does the same back to me. And I appreciate that. I go to Rosenfeld, who does the same, and some other people. And and I also look at who he's retweeting um, because I'm assuming that if he's retweeting somebody, that that's a guy that retweets him. So I'm saying that this is a guy that will reciprocate and look at my stuff. So if you get like five to ten guys that you know are going to be reading and reviewing your content and you do the same, it takes about ten minutes a day. You know, just going through the guys that you know you know will uh, reciprocate. I agree with that. I think that if we dedicated ten to fifteen minutes a day out of part of our social time. Yeah. Twitter, as well as LinkedIn and Facebook, and we could get pretty good returns. You know, add three or four friends every day on Facebook, <laughs> like some of their stuff, find the guys who are going to engage with you and vote for you, <coughs> return the favor. Same with Twitter. Just go to your friends, type their name, type Dave, type Rosenfeld, the guys in our circle who we trust. Retweet Don't forget their William stuff. Hurst. He's, William Hurst is great. He's got great content, and he, he always retweets back. Sure. First, and he looks like Hugh Hefner and acts like him too. <laughs> <laughs> the hell of an attorney too. Yeah. Hey, on David, uh, go along with your ideas. Uh, back to Google Plus. I don't know how much it really helps, and I'm guilty of this. Uh, just plusing somebody. Uh, going down the list and plus 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 without even opening the article uh, at least to give an indication that you actually read it. Uh, I, I would think if Google's so smart that they're screwing us over with Penguin and Panda that a, that a one plus without opening up what you're looking at probably may be a big waste of time. I would like to see a little bit more of people just hit the share button. I, I don't know if you still have to open it up and hit the share button, Mike. We've talked about that. You oh, know, yeah. just you guys, it's it's in Webmaster Tools. It it says right in Webmaster Tools if someone actually read the document or they just clicked on it. So they're tracking it. They're probably saying, okay, it's a plus, but they they just looked at the excerpt, so we'll give you some credit. But if someone just right clicked it and opened it and just kept on going down the list. Surely that would send a signal that someone actually read the document, and maybe you will read it later. The idea is, is if you right-click, open a new tab, right-click, open a new tab, that sends a signal that was read. If you leave it open, it says that there was no bounce rate on it. That was yeah, it's probably the same technology that they use with their AdWords. I mean, it's your yeah. your, your tab's got to be open for a certain period of time before the publisher gets the credit and the the advertiser gets the charge or the full yeah. charge. Yeah, I agree with Andre 100%. So, you know, I think Anthony's on the money. Sometimes it's not volume of shares and retweets or even articles that you post to get backlinks. It's quality. That's what they're looking for is quality. You know, I wonder, and Mike, you may be able to 
give some insight into this. I wonder if we have obviously a, quite a good group of people that are reading each other's content and resharing each other's content that they like. My concern is is that at some point Google will get sophisticated about this and say if we see a trend of the same people consistently liking and resharing each other articles, are they going to see this as some sort of scheme or conspiracy and actually discount people for that because they think it's some sort of club or agreement of this compensation going back and forth? Well, David, you know, you brought up a great point because that's what they did with circles. You know, now they actually call them circles, but back in the day they had these things called circles. And that uh, was really popular where people would, uh, you know, share backlinks and create a circle. And so that's always an issue that you, you have to be concerned about. But you don't really have to be concerned about it if you're like me because I don't just share stuff from my group of friends. I'm always adding new people, trying to attract non-attorneys uh, yeah. to add me as a friend. And, and so, yeah, just don't waste your time trying to create friends with lawyers. Besides, most lawyers aren't that fun anyways. <laughs> Make friends so with us. <laughs> Take your toys to someone else's sandbox <laughs> once in a while. You know, you'll have more fun. And, uh, you know, I've actually gotten quite a few clients, believe it or not, from social sites over the years. Ron didn't look like, look like he appreciated that one. <laughs> hey, make sure you friend, whatever you do, make sure you friend Dolman because it's it's very worthwhile. Dolman, yeah, you know Dolman, uh, he <laughs> Dolman's got the this whole strip club legal thing going on. I love it. It's <laughs> on tape. Be careful. You know the, the, what's really cool, guys, is the testing that I've done shows that when I use a picture of an attractive woman on an advertisement. The response is about 50% greater, not just from males, but from females as well. It seems like both genders appreciate it, there for whatever go. their reasons are. Uh, so that's always kind of cool. Um, so, David, what about LinkedIn? Well, I just started doing a little bit with that. I think that that's important, but I don't know. I don't spend as much time on that as I probably should, but I think... I was actually talking to someone who's in the business, and they were saying that statistics show that Facebook is actually the number one um, you know, social signal provider. So that is another thing that a lot of us are really not doing is resharing and you know um, doing stuff on Facebook. What about the fact that we can attract a lot more members into the circle by using LinkedIn because it's more like a business to business? Type thing. That's the point. That's probably true. But if you want the public, you know, our clients are not here on Google Plus yet. I don't think. Uh, and in fact, <laughs> I just had a girl. She's pretty internet savvy. She did took her a long time just to get the profile and do a review for me, which lasted all of forty eight hours. Uh, but you know that's another story. I, mean, I have questions about Google Plus, but I also can't stay away from it. The reason why is I can't help but think it. Look, they are the ones that control the algorithm, the search, uh, the search results on the algorithm. How could you not play in their sandbox with Google Plus? Because they have to be giving importance with with those social signals. So I can't stay away from it. But I have real doubts about what it all means and what what it's all doing. I don't know. Well, you did show me your uh, clout score, and clearly you had a higher clout score. Obviously, that's one of the signals Google is looking at is your overall authorship profile. If you spend all your time on Google+, Plus, you're missing out on a, real, a lot of great authorship signals from Posterous, Dig, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter. They all have great signals that they're sending. You know, and Google will treat a no-follow link like a do-follow link once you get enough votes. That's the dirty little secret. Uh, someone just handed me the new i5 I just got. Hey, right on. So, uh, it looks the same as the i4, basically. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Nice. Just got it. Like an iPhone with a boob job. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I started listening to David's speech, and I started feeling really guilty about how I never retweet the guy. But yeah. then I went on Twitter and I looked, and I'm not even friends with him. I'm not even following him. So you really should be insulted, David. Well, <laughs> but but I, maybe, I, that, maybe that's the I point. I'm kind of waiting for you to catch on. I, I, I go every day, every 
beat you, and I never get anything back, but I figure you'll catch on eventually. Hey, you were subtle. I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, but maybe that's part of the problem, too. Maybe we should try to find a way to have some sort of directory list. I'm not yeah. LinkedIn friends with most of you guys. I'm not Facebook friends with most of you guys. So we probably got to find some way to get it, even get it together in the first place. And I think Mike's right. I think if you, I mean, Mike really plays it straight in that he's really engaging people online. Yeah. I mean, part of it, sometimes it's just, I think a part of it's obviously mostly SEO, but I think Mike actually enjoys it too. Of course. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, this is my life. <laughs> I've got to have some fun. And yeah, and, and you do have fun with it. And I think, that, I think that's what sort of signals to Google too, that you're legit and not just retweeting, actually replying sometimes. I think Google probably has a sense of what's legit and what's not. Commenting. You guys should always try Yeah, be legit about comment. it. Yeah. Yeah, and actually reading the thing and then commenting. I try to do that with you in particular, Mike, because yeah, I know you're watching. I know that. I but know you'll read that. the thing and then spit something back. You know, know it's that. actually relevant. Yeah, you know, sometimes just discussing legal topics gets boring, so you throw some politics in there and it's fun. As long as we don't, you know, piss each other off too bad. You know, we're too actually bad being the operative word. Yeah, we're yeah. helping each other out. And then the right. next issue is, uh, you guys look. TweetDeck is really cool because you can install it on your phone, on your iPhone. And every time one of the guys in your group retweets something, it'll get like a little, doo -doo, doo -doo, like a little ring, and you'll know somebody just retweeted you, and you can know to reciprocate. It tells you who it was. So that's another app you can use that's free. Um, but you know, I agree with Dave. What we should, what we should do that's simple is. Hold on one second, guys. We have we have a video depth going, and they can hear every single word that I'm saying. Oh boy, so I'm in trouble. Great secrets, man. They're gonna take over. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, well, I think it's just the annoyance, the problem. But what we should do at a minimum is have a, a, a listserv type thing on emails, where everybody's on the email chain. Okay. Right, where we can all put in our LinkedIn, everybody can find everybody's stuff. Post well, it right on right? the Google, right? Google Trust blog, too. Yeah. Post it right there. Each, each one of you guys has a profile that has all of your accounts identified. Twitter, okay. LinkedIn, Facebook, everybody, you know, I, I think I've given you all access to the blog to create your own profiles. Andre's helping me with a new design. Please give us some input on it. Um, we can send you an email of, of the of how it looks now, and if you have any ideas to help make it better, but uh, you can put it up on the on the blog, and we could even set up a feature that automatically blasts the existing members of any new members' information. But we have how, an update list. How about if we do this though? How about we have one post that just has everybody's social media stuff on it? Perfect. That way, you can go and find it, just click it, clicks right over to your Twitter or whatever else. Well, can somebody volunteer to help? Do that because you guys, I'm I'm spending so much time trying to make this thing happen. I need some help, you know. Can I get a volunteer to help me put together and compile a list? Anybody? I'll send do me it. an email. <laughs> but really, you shouldn't need anybody. I mean, it should be just everybody goes and makes contributions on that one page. Well, we could do that. I can have everybody edits that. that page, so it needs no. You don't really need any help. Well, I can set up a page. Like I said, we have a profile page. Um, that we could use for that. You could put a picture of yourself, and you could put all of your social media info in a little blurb. You know, right. that, that could right. be it. You could call it the social media contact page, and we could also put it up on the tweetmart.com site, which I'm trying to make as a Twitter feed site for all the lawyers in our group. So take a look at uh, at tweetmart is another place you could have that list. And. I guess the same thing I'd say before. Any of you guys want to send your original content to me, I'll post it on my, awesome. any of my sites that they're interested in. You know, here's the other thing, guys. It's getting to the point now where I'm getting like five or six articles emailed to me every day. And I'm to the point where I'm going to create an administrator login on the sites that, that people can post on. Um, and I'm just going to let you guys upload your own stuff and then. I, you know, then send me an email that you've got something in the queue so I can edit it before it goes live because I don't want to run a riot of Google guidelines. I just don't want people posting stuff and then have Google say, well, it wasn't human edited. I want to be able to look at it, make sure that it meets our approval, uh, that it meets the Google quality guidelines, and then we'll go ahead and let it go live. And I, th I think that's somewhat part of the – I mean, I gave Mike 
Eli my uh, Google password and everything because he's part of the circle. I trust him. I know he's not going to put up anything that's inappropriate. Mm-hmm. I thought that was part of the being in the circle is if you're in the circle and you get to know the guy, you know he's only going to post good stuff. So some of us can exchange each other's passwords and information knowing that that's what the circle of legal trust is supposed to be about. I agree I with that's that. The ultimate, that's the ultimate goal, is it not, Mike? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that that once you're a fully patched member and you have the circle of legal trust patch on your site that says that you're a trusted member, that your site's been vetted by the circle, uh, and that you're in compliance with all the quality guidelines, which are actually much stricter than, than probably even Google's quality guidelines because we're so terrified of Google, uh, that it, it, we should have it set up to where a trusted veteran can just openly post a good article. Um, but the new guys and the guy, you know, the guys who are too free with Exact Match Anchor, we really need to to lock that down. Uh, if you guys keep on posting personal injury lawyer on every single article, you know, Google's going to look at that as a content farm spam site. I mean, yeah. look, use your use your brands. You know, you should have fifty percent branded anchors, anyways. Don't even bother with Exact Match unless it's on a high value page on someone's site, an existing page on someone's site that's high value. Don't be wasting that on blog posts. And also steer clear of going straight for the home page. A lot of people are guilty of that too. They're always going to the home page. That's a dead giveaway. Yeah, I do deep thinking. Mike, one of the things that might be good for us to do at one of these hangouts is to maybe uh, put up a blog post uh, because I've uh, I've seen a couple and some of these guys they have the same byline which is really nice I think because by Anthony Castelli attorney they usually make that their Google Plus profile link and I think you have to do that especially if you're doing a guest post Uh, and then for more information about Anthony Castelli click here and that could be the your about page sometimes maybe your home page but Sometimes if you can get a little bit of a template that we all understand, uh, you know, that would be helpful to me. Uh, okay. well, you know, I understand what you want us to do. What, what is it that we can do specifically and we'll do it? Well, I just think that we should have maybe a, a, a hangout where, where we go through, okay, Here's how should we should do a blog post uh, on our own site in terms of here. Here's where I put a link in here. Here's what the link was. Here was an exact match. Here's a, a text link that I did 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 put in. Uh, so you're looking for a tutorial on how to on how to post, Anthony? Yes, yes. And when maybe and maybe a little distinction if it's a guest post because that might just be. In my mind, maybe a little bit different, maybe not. But uh, you know, I've just been searching around, and I've seen, see, you know, you can see it's the guys that are that are posting, not necessarily in the circle of trust, but you know, they're not post, you know, they're posting good stuff the right way now that you're suggesting, so we're not killing ourselves. And so, but I'm, I fumble around through it. The other thing, what I've been told is if I send you an article, if I build it in WordPress, then I should uh, hit the HTML button, copy that, and then just paste that into my email that I send you. Yep, exactly. uh, Okay, Jonathan Rosenfeld told me that because he said the the other way I was (laughs) doing it, it wasn't formatting correctly. So. Yeah, the email will add formatting code to it and screw everything up. So make sure to always view an HTML and copy and paste that document. And then you mentioned something about it. Mike, sorry, something. I, have to, I have to interrupt you there. Go ahead. If you, whenever you're going to copy and paste into email, you're going to stuff up the whole thing. Rather put it into a plain text document with Notepad and attach the Notepad onto it. It's going to make it easier for everybody concerned. As long as it has the HTML coding, so I don't have to sit there and try and, and reformat it as yes, much. Yes, but, but, but put it in a text document because yeah. when, when, you, when you receive the HTML code and then you copy and paste, it brings in all sorts of problems, hidden characters, 
all sorts of issues come into play. So you know, Andre, you're right. Yeah. You're right about that. I haven't had that problem yet, but I. Oh, I've, but I've had I it so many it times. Exists. I know that it exists, and Andre's right. I mean, so far, guys, the stuff you've been sending me, I haven't had formatting being added into it through my email, but it definitely happens. So you could always use Notepad and just send it as an attachment in Notepad, but don't ever use. Uh, you know, Word WordPerfect or Microsoft yeah. Word. <laughs> I really don't understand what you're talking about there. Keep uh, doing what you're doing, and we'll have a tutorial about it. Maybe okay. we'll have Andre. <laughs> maybe, we'll have, maybe we'll have Andre write a, a quick tutorial with images or something. I'll help him write one. Um, uh, that'll be done over the weekend. That's fine. I'll, it'll cool. be. I have a couple questions from Mike. Okay. And that is, is there any? Let, for instance, if I go on and do a reply on someone else's Twitter page, which is linking back to mine. In other words, I get myself onto their Twitter page, my link. Is there any downsides to doing that? I don't think so. Uh, I, I think that what you like to do is put your link everywhere and comments and everywhere else. <laughs> and that's okay to do it. I would rather have somebody else give me the link. And that sort of brings me back full circle to, uh, to Google's uh, line of thinking. You know, Anthony mentioned, you know, guest posts. I think that it's a mistake to write guest posts on a guest post because they could always say, hey, that's trying to do link building, you know, like because they try to shut everything down once it's become successful. So their rules are pretty clear that the best way to get backlinks is to have someone link back to your article. Well, think about it. I just told you in a press release, I linked back to an article that Matt Dolman wrote that I really liked. I didn't put a guest post on my blog or on my press release that Matt Dolman wrote. I linked back to an authoritative article that was on his site. Look, this is pretty simple. You know, Anthony writes a bitchin' post on his site about something, and you know, maybe I send Anthony my own article that he can edit that also sort of talks about how great that article is. And then he links back to that article on my site. You know, that's more what Google's looking for. That, you know, they want people to link back to the great article that you wrote, not necessarily post, have you post your article on their site. Yes, that's good, but it's better to have someone linking to something you put on your site. That looks more natural. So if I write a bitch an article uh, on my site, man, you know, if, if Anthony took some cues from me and wrote a really cool article talking about the article that I wrote, that's going to give you much more of a boost and much more authority in the eyes of the public and Google, in my honest opinion. Does anybody have any thoughts on that? I have a question about it. If you Does Google penalize you if your post is too short, thinking that maybe you're not putting the time and effort into it? Like, for instance, if I wrote a four-page post, a four, uh, sentence post, this is a great article by Michael Eline describing this. Why don't you check it out? Is that going to hurt you? I think it's pretty thin. I, I don't think it's going to help you or necessarily hurt you. I think the person writing it on their site might get a panda type site wide problem because they're going to get flagged for just posting BS garbage on their site. But I think that that if I was to write a really great article on my site about a particular topic and then I sent you a post with maybe two or three hundred words with suggestions uh, where you could edit it maybe and make it better. Um, and then link back to that article that I wrote. I, you know, I think that's probably going to be better for you than just this is a guest post from you know, you know, link builder Mike Eline trying to get links back to his site. Um, because that's how eventually stuff like it's going to be construed. I just know how these guys operate. You know, the, the only avenue you have right now is building relationships with people who actually like stuff on your site and freely give you a vote from their site. Um, so well, you know, Mike. Let's just talk about. I do a blog on on uh, uh, nursing home uh, abuse of elders, and then for uh, resource resource articles, I put a link to one of Jonathan Rosenfeld's blog posts or even one of his uh, pages in that. That's kind of what you're talking about. It doesn't always have to be trading post. Uh, exactly. That's right. That's the whole point, guys, is when you, know, you write a bitch an article, put a link to one of your buddy's sites if it discusses something helpful about that article. That's what we want to see us guys doing. 
you know, like Ron Miller writes badass stuff like, you know, how to write a great demand letter. Well, if I write an article about writing great demand letters, I can use my authorship profile. But why wouldn't I put Ron Miller as a source of how to write a badass article? Oh, I that. had Ron Miller's website uh, bookmarked before I even heard of anybody. Somehow I found it, and I couldn't believe all the good content was on there. Ron, is that not the guy that's busy ripping off your site? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it might be. God damn it. No, I haven't, I haven't had time to. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Hey, Andre. Yeah. Now what I just talked about, a guy told me a year and a half ago that was a pretty savvy SEO that when you link out to other people, you're giving away your link juice. <laughs> he doesn't like to see that happen. Michael's talked me over that fear, but it's still in the back of my mind. Nah. No Get way. Andre. You're adding value to your user. That's what you've got to do. Amen. That's all you have to worry about. Don't worry about losing anything. Rather, worry about gaining additional readers. That's okay. that's it. Well, very that's good. All, Thank you. And then, my, Mike, why doesn't a a a press release create duplicate content? Why is well, that not a concern? Well, you know what? It, it is, and that's why I don't recommend using exact match anchors on press releases. Google treats press releases a little bit differently. I mean. Let's face it, blogs don't get at the very bottom on the first page of Google when you release a blog post, but press releases do. So Google treats news releases a little bit differently, but yes, it is duplicate content. And yes, a lot of press release companies overdo it and try to feed that content over a bunch of what I call you know, puppet sites, uh, which could definitely hurt you. Um, so yeah, I'm real careful with press releases now. I only use branded or naked anchors or view here, view source, I'm very careful about not to use the exact match anchors that I want to rank for because that could be looked at as manipulating the search results. At the same time, we know Google treats them a little bit differently. So assume that they're only going to index the original document that they actually put out across uh, the news releases in Google News. Um, and by the way, I just posted a link to the 24-7 press release that I recently did where I cite to Matt Dolman's article on his site. Um, notice that I'm the one who wrote that original article that's on his site. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys some other alternatives and, and how to link, not because you don't want to link build, uh, on how to get good votes back from people, you know, uh, who have quality sites. Um, so yeah, you guys are you're hitting on some good stuff, you know, press releases do raise some issues of duplicate content. So Dan, you know, Andre, what is your position on press releases and duplicate content? I turned my mic off. I think you, this, the same things we've been saying. Um, uh, use rel author anytime you're putting content out on the web. Uh, you can do exactly what you just did and link to places other than your own site, even if it's an article about you. That's great. Think about uh, think about the press releases you're going to be doing when you're doing uh, content share and you know trading favors with somebody and uh, have your horizon worked out. You should have a press calendar with these things all worked out in advance and have a couple in the in the in the can at any time so that when you've got if an article goes up about you on some other site, you can juice it right away by dropping a release, and one of the links goes there. Right on. Um, then yeah, you, I agree. I agree with you 100 percent. And also, don't you don't always have to link back to your your site. You can link back to your Google authorship. You can link back to your Facebook page. You can link back to your About Us page, which we've mentioned earlier as your deep linking. Don't always go for the home page. Yes, your home page is your landing page, but it's not necessarily the most important page. I, I mean, agree. Ron, I think you're you're based in Chicago, aren't you? No, I'm in Baltimore. I'm in sorry. Baltimore, sorry. Yes. You you could I mean, for instance, even if you write an article about Baltimore, you could link that to your uh, to your about us page. It doesn't have to be legal related but obviously you would want to go for legal related it's just I'm just using it as an example or to your Google profile just to build you up as a Baltimore resident and an expert 
within the area. Right. Am I wrong, Dan, if I say that? No, you're right. You're right on. Hey, Dan, when you put in there in your chat thing about uh, it can relative equals author, you had some safety by linking. You're, are you talking about putting that actual little code snippet in, relative author, Anthony Costelli, or are you just talking about by Anthony Costelli and linking that to your Google Plus profile? I would put the, the release itself on my own site, and I would put the link from in the, uh, in the release to my profile, and the profile knows my site. So it's, your I guess it's on site or your profile on Google? Um, my profile on Google. Yeah, and that's what I did in this press release that I posted the wrong one originally. The one that you see now on the left, I put my Google authorship profile in the release. I linked out to the source of material that I was citing about Penguin and Panda, and then I also did a, a naked anchor back to my, uh, I think my deep, child page, not even my home page. I don't even think I linked to my home page on this one. Now, one quick thing, uh, guys. Dan, I don't think these guys, all of them know what the REL author tag is. Um, so if you could help us understand that better. And then, what about REL vote for? Do you think that even matters? Or is a link just a vote no matter what? Yeah, I don't have much experience with the, with the REL vote. So I'm, I'm kind of reluctant to venture a statement on that yet. But as a general explanation to rel author, rel author is was introduced for uh, by Google to show the legitimate source of content. So as we're talking about duplicate content, and I, and I hit it in in the chat earlier, but I recognize it might have not been caught by everybody. Uh, anytime you're putting up new content, that is. Uh, powerful insurance against it getting scraped and put on crap sites uh, in a go-forward mode. So if you're putting up new content on your site or on a site that you contribute to, you should uh, set up rel author, you know, which step one means you need to have a Google Plus profile. And whatever site you're going to put stuff on, you need to list that site in your profile as a site that you contribute to. Now, if you are contributing to a bunch of different uh, places, those places do not have to be publicly listed on your profile. You can identify whether they're, uh, whether they're public or not. So if you're guest posting all over the place, and uh, some of the places would either be a distraction or not look quite of the same caliber as your site, you can hide them and still get the same effect. So you don't have to disclose to the world, uh, just disclose to Google. And you're just claiming credit for original work. That's all it is. It's a fantastic uh, mechanism, and it's you know it's uh, it's insurance. Go for it. Now applying it in reverse uh, is a little bit different, and we we hit that a little bit in chat. But if you've got content, so you made a, a killer post a year ago, and uh, you want to put the rel author. Uh, claim on it, so to speak. You need to do a little research first and go and see who Google considers the authority today. So, for yeah. example, if I put something up and, you know, somebody stole it and they stole it really well and really effectively, they might actually get credit as the owner. So you have to do a little diagnostic there to figure out, you know, uh, what to do. And if you've got a ton of pages to do this with, um, you either... You either do it in mass and accept a little bit of risk, or you do it one at a time and and uh, hunker down. How do, What's do that that How do you actually do it? I guess that's a question I have. Well, uh, it, there's a, there's a couple of different methods, and this is what um, AJ went over in detail a couple of weeks ago. But the simple method is on your think of think of two sites. Think of your website and think of your Google Plus profile. On your Google Plus profile, you tell Google Plus that you are a contributor to your site. And on your site, link back to your Google Plus profile. And the reason it works is because you're the only one who can do both of those things. Anybody can link to your site, and anybody can link to your profile, but only you can link them to each other. So that's what makes it legit. Love so it. When, when you do that, uh, Google knows. It says, "Oh, this is the real David Slepkow." So there's there's no there's no way to fake it. So it's an insurance policy, and it's worth the effort to figure out. 
So this was a little bit cursory. It's not that complicated, but it sounds complicated until you can, until you go to do it. Can I interrupt you quick? Yeah, yeah, go for it, Andre. What you can also do is just add it under your profile section. WordPress provides that you put your your authorship, um, your Google profile, but not with your following post hash. You know, if you look at your, I'm going to put it into chat now. Let me just get my URL here quickly. Um, a lot of people will add sort of like posts afterwards or about or something like that. What you what you need to do, how do I see my own profile here? Hang on a sec. Uh, view profile. Sorry, just bear with me here. Okay, a lot of people will put this link like that in onto their site and think that's okay then it's it's done or something to that effect. Yeah that's what I do. Yeah don't do that. What you need to do is you need to do that gives the best results. Rel author like that. Oh wow. That'll take the trailing slash and the posts and the about or whatever that end, take it away and put a question mark, rel equals author. Can, can you, uh, Andre, I know you're busy, but can you make that a, a small uh, little tutorial with snippets to walk all of us people who are less technical through this? Sure. I mean, I would love that. I'm sure that Ron and Anthony probably need that, because so we, we're going to forget to put that. Actually, uh, Andre already gave it to me. Oh. Because I, and I had the wrong one. I had the yeah, post, like Andre was saying. I had mine was under post. It was yeah. working, but I guess it works better doing using the actual publisher. Yeah. But, but Ron, you're a, you're a case in point because you've already got a highly authoritative site. So you know what I mean. You sort of you like a pleasure for Google, but I'm I'm talking about the average person from going from the start. You need to do it on that basis. On rel equals author at the end of your your right. Um, and take the posts in about about away because it gets all confused, you know. To, I mean, when we looked at yours, I didn't want to bring it up, but when we looked at yours on on snippet tools, I mean, you had a whole list of. Can you remember? I think I said the screenshot. You had like twenty profiles that were listed underneath it. So it's fine. It worked out all right for you at the end of the day, but you to get it right, you need to do it with that with the question mark rel equals author. Right. Can is that HSVP. a hyperlink, or you just put that link right in the bottom of the uh, the post? Well, uh, uh, sorry, I'm reading what Jim's writing here. Sorry, Anthony, say that again. Is that last link that you put down there, Andre? Do you just put that? Is, is Mike would call it that naked link, I guess, right in the bottom of the post, or are you actually uh, hyperlinking that to my name, Anthony Costelli? I would do. You can hyperlink it to your name, Anthony Castelli. You can hyperlink it to personal injury lawyer. You can do whatever you want with that. Okay. See a, a screenshot of actually this. See, I get confused of how this actually gets done. I don't know if there's a way to get a screenshot of of, of somebody actually doing it or seeing it being done, so I can understand. Okay. Let me. I'm going to log into the dashboard of the new Circle of Legal Trust. Um, I'm going to share the screen now. Hang on a sec. Let's go to posts. Um, how do I share screen? Can you see my screen? Not yet. There we, there we go. There it is. Okay. Now, as an instance, um, using my profile again, I would obviously go to the URL area here. I would copy it. I put it in my post um, in HTML. Let's say I'm going to do a link to Andre van Beek. Uh, let's say I'm doing Andre on G+. I will paste. Can you see that? I can yes. I've just pasted my profile. Now I'm taking posts or about and the trailing slash away. Now I'm putting in a question mark. Rel equals author. Like that. 
and that's what it would look like on your on your post. That's it. In every post, you do that in every post. You can do that in every post, or you can actually, if you on, um, if you obviously managing your own site, it would be automatically posting at the top what they call meta tags at the top of the post. You know where it says published by admin or published by Ron Miller or whatever. You can actually just you can add it into. Okay, sorry, I haven't installed that over here. That's there, there's plugins that can do it, but let's just say, for instance, this aim that you can see is Google Plus. You would add your your Google profile there, and then you would put in the same rel equals author. And movable type probably has a similar feature. Ron Miller uses movable types. Some of this stuff doesn't apply to him. Now, is it helpful that you only want to do that on your best? Best article so that you have a better Google profile, not on all your posts. Yeah, that's what Dan was saying earlier. You would want to do it with what you think represents you and your company. Good stuff. And then you, and then you would have to tie it in. Uh, let me go back to my good. Sorry, let me just reshare here. Uh, what Dan was saying um, is you'd want to go here to your about section. Can you see my screen, everyone? Yes. Okay. Uh, you would want to go down here to contributor two over there. So you would edit your edit your profile. Go down to your contributor two. Click on that, and then I would add here add custom link um, circle of legal. Beautiful. Trust. Now, does it have to be the home page or the child page that you've contributed to, or do you just use the primary domain? Um, I think it's primary domain. I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Makes sense. Not, um, yeah, that's, that would be the logical circle of legal trust. Okay, this won't, this won't work because I'm not obviously vetted on there, but just as an example, that's what you would do. You would say it's that. It's not spelled right, so it's going to be a problem. Yeah. But this you know what I mean. A, so you'd understand. You can have, you see what, what Dan was saying earlier is that this is your area of concern here. Is That's what represents you. You can link to whoever you want, but your contributor to is possibly one of the best areas that, that you're going to promote yourself. Then you'd also want to link all your other profiles, like I've done here: Facebook, LinkedIn, with the, you know, that sort of thing. But that's just the main page, right? That you're linking to, not every page of your web of your blog, right? No, no, just just one page. One page. You can either link it. To, I I would think that's what Mike brought up now. I would think it would be best to link it to your home page. You can try link it to a child page. I have never tried linking it to a child page, to be honest. Does that make sense, Dan? That that's really great stuff. Now I fully understand it. It's badass. I'm gonna do it today. Awesome. Yeah, and I'm lost gonna, again. <laughs> don't worry, we're gonna do a tutorial on this, Anthony. All and, right. it's saved, and it's saved to video, Anthony. This is going to be saved to video, so the last 15 or so minutes of the video, you can just fast forward to it and watch it again and learn. Hey, well, okay. and see, the next, Dan's the, the got next something step down there now. Ron, yours is over in the chat box, but that's now I'm confused because Andre sort of said, I thought Andre said that's not what you do. You don't you take the post part out of there. <laughs> that's right. But but here's the deal though. I just looked at it. If you click if you click on the authorship thing and put it put that in the the search, it comes up as posts. Yeah. But I think I have it right, but it comes up as posts. Yeah. Oh. You okay. feel me? So we're talking best practice now is to rather put it So watch, I'll show you. Put that in your put that in your search engine. Put that link in. It redirects back to post. It redirects the post, Mike, exactly. That's the lingo I was looking for. It redirects. Yeah. Hmm. 
what you're saying. Uh, I'm just talking more from a best practice point of view. You're going to get better results with your question mark rel equals author, better and quicker results. I agree. I think it makes sense. Uh, so the last you... thing that Ron just typed in, if I do a post, I put that in in, in the post and when it comes out, it's going to read what like what Andre showed before, uh, something like what, what Andre. Is your, what is your author, author profile, Anthony? Hang on, I'll get it. Anthony Castelli. Well, that's interesting. So Dan, you're saying I don't have it right? Anthony, that's yeah, it's, your... it's it's not just a uh, a redirect. I went into the I just clicked the copy link when I dropped it in before. So when you mentioned that, I opened up the source and looked at the HTML, and it's it's the same. So I mean, as Andre indicated, it's still going to work. It's just not optimal. Right. But yeah. I, I'd ask them to change it. I'd ask the people at Justia to change it. Yeah. Maybe they didn't do it. God, Anthony, this is this is your that's helpful. That's your profile. That's about Anthony Costelli. Okay. Okay. So you'd want that same profile, except you want to take off the about mm -hmm. and the trailing slash and add your rel equals author at the end. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. See, there's been a lot of talk about this, but no, now I really can understand how this actually works. Yeah, we, I'll put it in writing, David. It's, um, you know, a lot of people take this, well, people that work online, like Dan and myself, take it for granted that people know how to do this. But it's, it's I mean, we, we discussed it, Ron. You know, the thing with the posts and the about it, it confuses the issue for Google because it's picking up all of these things instead of picking it up once. And yep. there is with the with the question mark rel equals author, it picks it up once and it duly um, recognizes or honors the the author there. It's sort of wow. as Dan said, it's optimal and it's it's sort of best uh, best practice. Awesome. But, but now to confuse the issue even more. Oh, don't confuse right? it. <laughs> <laughs> for, for your for your homepage for your flagship, can I put it in in quotes? Your local page, uh, run. What's your local page? Your um, Google local page. Wait, let's go to Anthony. Do you have one? You don't have one. Do I have a what? Wait, let's go to Elon. Your places Wolf. page. Your places. Your Google yeah. places page. Yes, I do. Anthony Castelli, attorney. Okay, hang on. Let's. I'm going to use you as an example again. Hope you don't mind. There we no, go. No, I so, love it. Okay, I'm just going to See, that's where Dan Goldstein, he doesn't tell me this stuff, Mike, because he wants to have his people write my articles, though he loves the fact that I do that because it makes him look good in the long run. No, look, it's about making money at the end of the day for us, Anthony, but, uh, you know, at the well, circle you of know, evil, hey, we all got to, you know. <laughs> got to pay the bills. <laughs> um, Anthony, okay, can you everybody see my screen again? I'm at your places page, 8170 Corporate Park Drive, Cincinnati. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay, so now I'm copying your Google, the old Google Places page, and I am making, now that's what the link looks like on your business page. Okay. N nice legs, Mike. Um, okay, now that then becomes rel equals Publisher. Publisher. Not author. Okay. Your publisher is your company. You the news giver. So every time you write an article, Google, which is something else Mike and I chatted about yesterday, um, Google will see you as a publisher and respect you as somebody who's distributing value added content from a news perspective. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you're okay. saying I should put both in the post, then? I do. No, you've okay. got to put them 
you got to put your your in the post is your personal your personal um, profile. Your real yes. author. Okay. On your website, to get people to like your site on Google and to do reviews and etc., you've got to have a link to Anthony Castelli Attorney to that page. That's what I have. I have on my on my yeah. website both. I'm well, seeing my this, people got me hooked up. They got my web page link to Rel Publisher. The only problem with that, as Mike and I have talked about, is your picture doesn't show up in Google search results. That's not what uh, it's about. It's, it's about establishing your site as an authority. So just and they, will, the they will pick up the latest news. They'll pick up the latest news and show Anthony Castelli as having written that. Already looking at Anthony Castelli attorneys as being a proven publisher and a, a, a source of relevant and etc. information. The only thing, Andre, though, when when you search now, let's say for a Cincinnati personal injury attorney, there's only one guy in Cincinnati that's hooking his website up to Rel Author, and his picture shows up. And the, the, but you're sort of saying just bite the bullet on that, make your website link to your web, rel, your Google Anthony Castelli attorney page by rel publisher because that's going to make your website authoritative. Yes. But, so you're suggesting don't also have author? No, I'm saying both. You, yeah. But not, that's what I not, not, not per post. You can ha actually have it in your header or your footer. That's what on I have. Your whole site on site wide. You can yeah. have join uh, join Ron V Miller at Google Plus and join um, Miller and Zoyce at Google Plus. Well, I'm confused now. Are you saying just so I get this very clear? Are you saying in every post we do both? And if so, we are. Or are you saying no, we do one or the post. other? No, no I'm put saying your footer. posts. Posts do author. But site wide, do author and and publisher. Do author and publisher in your footer. And what I do is I highlight my actual address for publisher. Yeah. Because I it's, find that sites that do that in the search results, the the actual address will display under their result, which is really cool. You effectively giving yourself citations. Yep. By doing that. Yep. yep. Okay. We'll do a tutorial. You know, Andre and I will write a tutorial with excerpts on how to do this. And maybe Dan, you could contribute too. We'd love to see a post from Dan on the Circle of Legal Trust. I haven't seen one yet. Would love to. Yeah, I, I did that, and the picture came on right after I did it. Yeah. And it did, it did boost traffic a little bit. It seemed like. Oh yeah. Make so sure Ron, it. you do publisher and author both. Well, no, I just I've just been using. I talked to Dan and John and Andre about it, and basically I decided to go with just putting um, my own on there. Author. 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 Yeah. You see, the thing is with Ron's example is see, he's competing against himself on on two different sites, which is a great thing. And he took the business decision in saying that you know what I want my picture to show on the the injury lawyer blog as opposed to trying to compete on the picture side with um, Miller and Zoyce and the, and the it, blog. It won't show right? both. You know, it won't no, show it both. It will never ever show both. Right. And that's exactly what I said to you in an email. In a client of our, well, a client, indirect client of mine has got three different Google Plus profiles which I have set up personally. All three are competing on the first page of Google and only one will ever show. Only one. Right. Hey, I got Andre. I, I mean, I've never got a formal introduction about your resume and your background. Uh, you know, I don't he's know if you talk about secret. <laughs> he's a little mysterious. I mean, all the way, he's very mysterious. That's the way I, I like to keep more. it. <laughs> British SAS. Give us a one, Andre. When you see that periscope next time you're in the lake or whatever, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Hey, you guys, look, I'm going to end the video portion of the discussion. I think we got enough on video. Feel free to keep on talking. i got to you know, go and do some stuff. But again, Listen, I want to thank you. 
before you cut off, sorry, Mike, I need to interrupt. I need the yeah. profiles from the originals. Um, I put my email into chat. I'll put it in again. Uh, Andre van Beek. The originals know who they are, and I need to, um, some feedback on the new on the new theme for the Circle of Legal Trust. Please. You can be brutally honest. I really don't care. And Dan, we need a profile from you as a contributing editor. Okay. And um, yes, please. And then also, you guys, when you send your profiles, send all of your social links so we can put those by your profile, like what Ron was saying to do. And David, you were unclear. Do you want us to retweet you? Yes. Come on, Ron. I've been very passive aggressive about this, Ron, but I guess I'm going to be aggressive now. I got it now. I got it. Oh, so, 